Welcome everybody to another episode of Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. And as stated in Priestley, this is a post-commentary run just due to the fact that I was sick at the time of recording this. So I'm actually watching and commentating this probably right alongside ya, so to speak. So this is the first dungeon, which when I first played this way back when, when I first got it during Christmas Day from my parents, I actually didn't realize this was a dungeon, actually. This was, is, the first dungeon of the game. I was just rolling through it, thinking it was just one other area that I had to explore in the Kokiri Forest, and then somewhere later down the road, I would actually get uh, into my first real, true dungeon. No, actually, it wasn't until I grabbed the map that I was like, Oh! I ha this is a map! Oh wow, this is an actual dungeon! <laughs> you know, it wasn't until I got the chest, with the map in it, that I start realized that, oh, okay, we're already here. So you pretty much get into the first dungeon just as quick as... Well, really, not as quick as Ocarina... Uh, Le Link to the Past. But you get you get to the first dungeon pretty quick, though, in this game. Yeah, making these jumps was probably one of the hardest things. I kept falling down. Like I mentioned in the previous video, Trying to reorient that camera so hard. And you won't believe how many times when I first played this, I tried crawling up that wall and tried to get around those things. You obviously can't because they're placed in a position so they will always spot you before you get too far up and they'll knock you down every time. I died several times playing this particular part of the level because I didn't know you were going to get the slingshot later on uh, as, as I continue past on the walkway to shoot those spiders down, those Skotulas down. So I was like getting frustrated. I'm like, why can't I get past these guys? And I kept trying, I kept trying, I kept uh, climbing up and they kept knocking me down. Mm, so much frustration. But yeah, overall, this is actually a really simple dungeon. Not too bad, not too complex. And yes, Navi has to interrupt to let you know how to open a door. Because if you think about it, this is actually the first door you've encountered the entire game. That scare me. So you gotta reflect his shots back at him with the shield. Which I think she mentions something of the sort, but what she doesn't mention I think is to chase after him or he will come back and dive back down into the burrow. And then you gotta repeat the process of kicking him back out again. What he tells you here is actually a very helpful technique. Saves me a lot of hurt whenever I jump down from on high. And, you know, just in case you got too hurt in the battle, he'll drop a heart for you. This whole dungeon is kind of like one big gimme. <laughs> That's pretty... scary there. Oh, look, yeah. I forgot, I had to re-record over this, so there's like my mouse cursor in the middle of the screen there. Oh gosh, because it came out with no sounds, and the sound was separate from the video, so I had to record it with the sound over it again. Yeah, I forgot my cursor was in the video there. Shoot. No matter, we have the main primary projectile weapon as a child now. This is pretty much your bow and arrow as a little kid. Now that platform that shook and fell down, at first when I missed it, I thought I was I was done for. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's not gonna respawn. I'm done. I can't I can't proceed onward in the game. But there's actually vines down below that you can climb up to the ledge. So even if you don't make those two jumps across the falling platform, you can still climb up and get your slingshot. And yes, you kind of have to be head on, on a ladder for Link to climb back up. Okay, so this is where when I got the slingshot, it clicked into place for me. I was like... Oh, so maybe if I shoot them down, I can get past them? And sure enough, that was the solution. And I felt really, really dumb. I mean, I, I what, what was I? I think I was 13, 14? 
I was a young teen when I first played this. It, it, it was a long time ago. But I just wasn't thinking like that when I first came across this wall, and I gave myself a lot more pain and agony than I probably should have. But hindsight's 2020, and this dungeon ain't really that bad. Considering it's the very first 3D Zelda dungeon, they made great use of the X, Y, and Z axis, especially the Z axis. Or, you know, the up-down vertical axis, I should say. They really gave this entire central area a great big you know, deal of scope. And then this, I could not figure out how to kill these things. Yeah, he was turning, you know, backside, frontside, backside, frontside, but it never occurred to me that his backside was vulnerable. Because I kept hitting his front, I'm like, why can't I kill this thing? And so when he flipped behind, I kept thinking backside was just as invulnerable. I, there was a lot of things when I was younger I just did not get right off the bat. Your first instance of timed switches. It's not too bad. I mean, for the grand scheme of things, it gives you plenty of time, but it gives, it puts the seed in the player's mind that there's going to be other instances like this where you're going to have to hit a switch and do something within a time limit, and it's going to be a lot more difficult than this room. This room's pretty low threat, all set, things said and done. The compass is actually very useful, and I don't think it, I think it was not until this game, Ocarina of Time, where the compass actually became useful as an item. Because before it just showed the where the dungeon boss was, which is pretty lame if you think about it. And I think here I wanted to show you guys one other huge side quest in the game, which I'm not doing, by the way. Because, you know, minimalist and all that. But there, the Golden Skull Toolers. There's a hundred of these guys in the game. And doing so will get you cool prizes, pieces of heart, and ultimately, infinite money. So you kill them, and it drops a gold token. You collect that, and you deliver them to the disfigured spider family in Kakariko Town. Oh, don't. Yep, I thought I was going to make a mistake there. <laughs> that was funny. But you give them to the disfigured spider town uh, family in Kakariko Town, and they'll give you the goodies. Now this is actually an interesting puzzle. This is an inventory puzzle. So you have to recall that the Deku branch in your inventory is burnable, and so you gotta pull that sucker out, go to the lit torch, and light up the unlit torch. So instead of like a room-based puzzle, this is more of a inventory-based puzzle, which is actually kind of neat. Now the next puzzle is a puzzle of spatial, spatial dimension and the overall physics of the game world. If you try to jump from a lower level to the center of the Deku tree, you would not have enough, I guess, velocity to break through. And you actually have to slice too. You can't, I, I don't think you can just drop down into the web. You actually have to have your out, I believe, to break that web. And so that was something I think it took me the better part of a half hour to even figure out what the heck to do, because I didn't know what to do. And I, and I don't think Nobby tells you, yeah, you gotta drop down through the hole in the floor. So that's something that you, as the player, have to figure out. There's a hole in the floor. I can jump down onto it, from some of the lower levels, but it doesn't, it just bounces me up and down. So what if I try it at the very highest level? What does, what happens? What happens if I try it with my sword out? So a lot of just things, you know, just that the player has to connect the dots in their mind to solve that puzzle. I'd have to, I dare say that was probably the trickiest puzzle in the entire dungeon for me in the Deku Tree dungeon. I don't think anything else gave me nearly as hard of a time, you know, mental, mentally wise, trying to solve than that one puzzle getting to the lower levels of the Deku Tree. That infuriated me. I remember that. <laughs> T 
two, three, one. What he doesn't tell you is from left to right. So you go for the middle, and then the right, and then the left. And then of course, the next puzzle is just looking around and then figuring out that you gotta shoot it with the slingshot. Now obviously if you've played previous Zeldas, that seems pretty obvious, but this, if this is your first Zelda, what do you want me to do with that eye? <laughs> so there are a couple assumptions that the developers make that you should, that they expect you to know how to do having played previous Zeldas. Now this one's interesting. It introduces you to the concept of diving, which you will have to do a couple times over the course of the game to complete the game. But this is the first time where you have to look for things underwater and dive down to reach them. So, very simple puzzle, but it introduces a very important concept. And then of course, this this room actually introduces two concepts. Block pushing. Cuz let me tell you, there's going to be a lot of block pushing. And of course, you know, Navi has to put in her two cents just in case you couldn't figure out what to do. So if you stand next to it, you can actually push it or pull it. But if you stand next to it and press against the actual block, then it'll change to climb, and then you can get on top of it. So if you just want to push and pull it, you just stand next to it and don't push into the block. Very interesting game mechanic, that. And this is, where, this is the room where you learn it. In case you ran out of Deku branches, here's a respawning Deku Baba. I mean, they give you the tools you need in the very room. There's a lit torch and two unlit torches. So if you recall anything from the previous room where it was just one lit torch, you know what to do here. And the jump slice, which I just did, is actually double in attack power than your normal slices or stabs. So that's something interesting to know and utilize over the course of the game, is the jump slice. But you need some distance from your enemy to properly do it. Now there's a bombable wall here, and there really is nothing of value in this particular area behind the bombable wall, except I think for maybe... What was it? Uh, I think it was a Golden Skulltula. Golden Skulltula is the only reason for you to backtrack into this dungeon after you've claimed bombs and bombed that wall. And what just dropped down behind me was some little baby gomas. <laughs> Case in point, I needed a little more distance on my jump attack for that. Oh, I recall this. I remember getting through up to this point, and then, I don't know how or why, I stupidly jumped off this area back into the water before I pushed that black block that you'll, that I'll ta that you'll see in a moment into the water to get myself back up. So I had to loop my way all the way around to get back up to this upper platform. I was so pissed. Yeah, I jumped right off into that water without even pushing this block over. That did not make me happy. <laughs> I made so many mistakes playing this game. Laughable. Yeah, when you hear that little chiming sound, that's when you know that it's permanently stuck. So if you were to exit the room and come back, that block would not move anymore because you put it in its permanent position. And here, you actually have to strike with the Deku uh, stick for 
for it to catch fire. You can't just stand on top of that thing and expect it to catch fire. A little bit of a puzzle in itself, if you really think about it. Not only do you need to bring the Deku fire, the Deku stick fire, to the cobweb, but you got to strike down to actually make it catch fire. And here's this whole 23 is number one. You just stand on top of this burrow. That's the easiest way to get rid of them. And it just gives you the basic fundamentals of how to beat a boss. Whenever any boss is stunned, you hit it with the sword. That's how you kill these things. And with that, we're outside the primary boss door of the very first boss of the game. So until the next video, everybody, I'll see you later. Apparently I saved after every video. After I ended every video. I didn't know that. <laughs> So it was it was a while scored of this. I'm I'm actually kind of re-remembering this all over again. Anyway, see you later.